Hi, this is Tessa from Or Up to the Stars. I've got a book chat for you today. Book chats are hosted by Misty over at The Book Rat, and this month we're talking about um, book spines because we usually focus on the cover and how gorgeous the cover is or how it relates to the story or whatever. But in bookstores and in libraries, we usually see the spine first, and it's the the font or something going on on the spine, the title, something makes us pick up the book, see the cover, look at the back blurb, um, and see if we're interested in reading the book. Um, but it all starts with the spine, usually. Um, and so I'll start off with my favorites. Um, I really like good fonts, um, fonts that are evocative of the plot, that somehow relate, at least convey the tone of the plot. Um, and so first is The Humming Room by Ellen Potter. Um, this lovely little curly cue, you can't really, s oh wait, never mind, that's a, uh, I thought that was a butterfly for a minute, um, above humming. Um, but this curly cue, kind of bright green, unexpected green um, on there, is just really pretty um, and it would make me interested enough to pick it up. Another one is Breadcrumbs by Anne Ursu. Um, another curly cue font, um, really simple, whitish purple and then dark purple, um, thin sort of thing. Um, curly cues to me evoke some sort of magical fantasy type thing, um, whereas something like My Life as a Book has a really blocky title. Um, but I really like this one as well. It's just a, an entirely different kind of plot, a more contemporary um, imagination, but in a concrete sort of way where these are actually magical. Um, this one is just what he imagines, and I like the different colors of the letters. That's a lot of fun. Just a fun book in general, so we have a fun font to reflect that. Um, and then the last font selection that I have is the Mysterious Benedict Society, which is so much fun, and I just found out the other day that there's a fourth book in the series that I'm going to have to check out. Um, but I like, it's a really simple spine, um, but also a lot of fun, and it goes really well with the scroll work of the title on the front. So, those all have really great fonts. Um, another, I guess, category of book spines is a wraparound cover. So we've got the maze runner that starts out with the glade and the gate and the spiky things in the maze, and then we wrap around and it's still going. Um, the dark stormy sky. Really cool. And I didn't notice this until I was looking for books to use for this book chat. But there is a person right there on the spine and I never noticed that and so I'm, that's really cool. Um, and I wish that the Delacour Press logo wasn't getting in the way of this kind of corridor here because um, I want to know what's there. But that's really cool. So surprise for what's on the cover. Um, the only other wraparound type, well, I guess I've got another one, but the other wraparound cover that I've got is Book of a Thousand Days by Shannon Hale. Um, her sleeve here continues to wrap around in the yellow here that where the title sits, Book of a Thousand Days, and then Shannon Hale, or I guess just Hale, is in this dark red portion here. Um, I wish my webcam was better because this is a really pretty red. Um, that contrasts well with the yellow. Um, so this looks really cool sitting on my shelves. Um, yeah, just really pretty. I guess the other wraparound title that I've got is um, Jane Austen Made Me Do It, a collection of short stories by Laurel, or er, edited by Laurel and Natchez. Um, it's got these pink things going off that evoke kind of crime tape to me. I don't know if that was intended by the publishers, but it's the vibe that I get, um, and it wraps around but it's pink ribbon, um, so I like that contrast a lot, even if it wasn't what the publisher was intending. I think it's cool. Um, and it looks really neat on the bookshelves because we've got this dark gray up here that fades down into a lighter gray um, with the really contrasting bright pink that is just really cool. Then, <coughs> excuse me, um, then the last element um, that a lot of people have been talking about in their book chats is um, an element on the cover reproduced on the spine. Um, so George Orwell's 1984 has this really creepy dark or bright blue eye. Um, I think every cover of 1984 that I've ever seen has an eyeball on it, um, but this one's just, I love this stark white to bright blue contrast, um, just creepy big brother-ish. Um, and then next is two books from the Mistborn trilogy. Um, 
where we've got these really cool pictures on the front with Ellen and Vin um, that are reproduced on the side and just look really cool sitting on my bookshelves. Um, the second book in the trilogy kind of cuts someone's face in half on the spine and I don't know why they did that um, so it doesn't get to be included in this one but those are really cool. So Hero of Ages and, and Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson. Um, then Eats, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss, which is another one I didn't notice the spine until I was looking through my bookshelf specifically for this book chat. Um, but there is a panda bear pole vaulting to paint the comma into this this list, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves. Um, but it's just a panda is pole vaulting, and so that's just really cool. And then the final one is really simple, but different. Um, every single cover I've showed you up to this point has had a vertical title and that's how m most books are just because titles are long and book covers or, or spines tend to be thin. But when you're Alexander Dumas with a, what is this, over a thousand pages books, you can write The Three Musketeers horizontally. And so I like that. Um, it's different. It sets itself apart from the rest of the books on my bookshelf. Um, and I like the simple simplicity of, I think this is called Cordelie. Um, but it's just a really simple cover. Um, spine, not cover. The cover is less simple. But the spine is really simple and that's cool. Um, and I also wanted to share this because I bought this book because of the back blurb. It's actually a quote from the novel. Um, you misunderstand me, gentlemen, said D'Artagnan, raising his head on which a ray of sunlight played at that moment, gilding its fine, bold features. I apologize to you in case I cannot pay my debt to all three of you, for Monsieur Athos has the right to kill me first, which takes away much of the value of your claim, Monsieur Porthos, and renders yours virtually null, Monsieur Aramis. And now, gentlemen, I repeat to you my apologies, but only for that, and en garde. Um, that is why I bought the book. I think this was about $10 or something um, on the bargain books shelf. Um, but just this apology that, I'm sorry, he has to kill me first, so your two's claims to kill me is, aren't quite as valid. Um, so sorry about that. And now let's, let's do a, it was just a lot of fun. So no, that's not the book Spine, um, but I thought it was involved, um, involved enough to include in the book chat. So um, let me know what you think. If you have any great book Spines that you want to share, link it up to Misty's original post. I'll include a link to to her blog post so you can do that so you can see what other people have had to say about their book spines. Um, but that is all for me today. Have a great day!